coming down onto this section down here, uh, we need to look at cutting this up as well. And I know that this middle part of the bottom of the well has a lot of rocks on it. So I'm gonna separate out that piece completely. I'm just gonna take a quick look at the UVs because this is a larger section. So you can see that the UVs here have a lot more space given over to the top cap than to the uh, bit with the stones in it. So I'd almost like that to be the other way around. Now, uh, again, I'm not gonna go and edit the UVs because I'm not gonna retexture it, but I'm definitely gonna separate off the top caps and the middle section. So I'm gonna grab all these faces in the middle here. I can go to extract in this case. And now we have the top object here and we've got this middle section. And with this middle section, I'd like to add a good few more polygons to it because I'm going to try and displace it. So I'm going to add some more polygons to it just by smoothing it out, I think. And then I will add some polygons to it so we can smooth it here. And let's add quite a few here. And then we can add some more polygons when we're actually displacing it at render time. For the top sections here, um, I am going to add uh, just some supporting edge loops. I'm going to do it with a bevel here. So I'm just going to use a bevel and I will soften off the bevel just a little bit and we're going to add another segment maybe and just keep the depth and we get this this nice little edge going on here. So that's probably enough for that section right there. And let's go and take a look at this middle section and what we can do to try and improve the look for that. So with the rocks we have this very sharp edge. We're getting a lot a good bit of detail coming in from our normal map. So what we could try and do is we can try and turn our normal map into a displacement map and we'll have some limited success at doing that and that's because normal maps don't contain any height information. We have vectors here uh, so they point in a direction which the lighting system can use but they don't actually have any height information built into them which is what a displacement map needs. And rebuilding a displacement map from a normal map is a little bit tricky if you're of a more technical mind and you want to know more information, you could do worse than taking a look at this breakdown uh, that is up on the NVIDIA website. Now, it's a little bit older. It's from SciGraph 2011, but they go into some detail about trying to rebuild a displacement map from a normal map and some of the issues that you would run into and some of the guesswork that you have to do. I'm going to hack my way around it as usual. So I'm going to use this website over here and... This is a texture converter website. So I've taken that normal map and I've put it in here and uh, I've generated a fake displacement map if you want to think of it that way. And this is what I got out of it. Now this is a, the map is limited I think to 512 by 512 but I got some information out of it. I wasn't getting enough information in this area. So I went and took the roughness map and I, I blended a little bit of the roughness map into this displacement map to try and get a little bit more detail. Uh, but that's how I kind of hack my way towards getting a displacement map. So let's go and take a look at hooking up that displacement map to our shader here. Uh, so here we have the well shader and the well shader is applied to everything in the scene. So I'm gonna take my well shader here and I am going to duplicate it. I'm gonna say duplicate the shading network. I'm just gonna graph this one. And I'm gonna rename it to rock shader. And I'm going to go and apply this shader here onto this new surface. And here in the hypershade, then uh, I want to graph ingoing and outgoing connections because when I do my displacement, I need to do it onto the shading group. Uh, so here's my shading group just here. And onto the shading group, I need to add a displacement shader. So let's just put it down here for a minute. So we'll hit tab and type displacement shader. Get rid of that shading group, we don't need it. Hook it up to the shading group for our rock shader. And into this displacement shader, we need to go and add our displacement map that we created. So I'm gonna go and grab this displacement copy just here. Now the displacement shader is almost always guaranteed to be way too high. So let's put it down to 0 0.05 or something like that. Uh, let's close down our hypershade for a second. Let's select our select our surface here and on the shape for this particular model we want to go and add more subdivisions so come down to Arnold and we can come down to subdivisions here and change it over to Cat Clark 
and change it to three iterations just there and that should give us plenty of polygons and then we should go render and we can go update full scene and we've got some kind of displacement happening so here we can see the displacement has been pushed outward now there's two things really that we want to try and get out of the displacement the first is that we want to try and get a little bit more break up around the silhouette and that will be particularly useful as this thing starts to rotate through 360 degrees and the other is we want to get some more detail into the rocks themselves so these should have a rougher kind of surface they feel a little bit plasticky at the moment because the highlight the highlight is too broad uh, so we're going to get in some more high frequency detail in there so that's what we're looking to try and achieve uh, let's go back and open up our hypershade and see what else we can do to improve our look here uh, so just on my displacement shader just here uh, i can come down to arnold and one of the things that i can do is i can change the scalar zero value so at the moment what it's saying is zero in other words black in our map uh, does nothing and white one will push everything outward and that's really not what I want in this case. I don't want to push everything outward. Uh, I would like some things to go inward. So to do that, I need to change this value here to 0 0.5. And that will push some of the surface value in. Now, you can spend quite a bit of time adjusting displacement maps uh, while rendering. So in the last uh, two or three versions of Maya, they brought in displacement in the viewport. So we can take a quick look at that. Now one of the other little jobs that we need to do is we want to get more high frequency detail running across our model. So let's try and do both of those things at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to uh, come away from my displacement map just for a moment. And as I'm setting this up, I'm actually going to do it using just a bit of noise to start off with. So I'm going to unhook our displacement map and we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to put down some noise here. And what I'm looking to try and do is get some high frequency noise to break up those specular highlights to make the rock feel like it has less of a broad highlight which you associate with plastic uh, so on the noise here i'm going to just take out the or value and that's because displacement is looking for a float not a vector and then what i need to do is i need to go and set it up on the model so i'm going to select the model here and on the shape i'm going to go down to smooth mesh turn on smooth mesh preview and you can turn on displacement preview and something is happening uh, so we're definitely getting some noise uh, starting to work. I'm going to select my noise just over here. And I need to go and adjust these values to try and get some more high frequency noise. Uh, so I can play around with the ratio here. And I want to be watching the, the swatch as I do this. And this will give me some idea of the kind of noise that I'm starting to generate. And usually this frequency one is going to give me quite a good bit more detail as well. So now I'm starting to get these more interesting shapes breaking up the overall surface. So I've tweaked those values quite a bit and I've got some higher frequency detail in here now. Okay, so that's gonna help break up that specular highlight uh, So and give some nice detailing to the rock. And what it, really what we want is to be able to see that highlight as the rocks rotate around. So the speck should move across the surface, which should look quite nice. Okay, so that's my noise there. Now, I also want to try and incorporate that displacement map I went away and created. So I'm going to hook back up my displacement map here and see what's going on with that. So this is what I'm getting out of the displacement map at the moment. And it is starting to pick up some of the shapes. Now, there really isn't enough detail to push the rocks in and out in the way that I would like. And I would need to try and generate a displacement map from a high-low poly bake to do that. Uh, now I have my high frequency detail and I have my displacement map and I'd like to actually have both of them working on the displacement. So let's go and add them together and to do that I can use a plus node, plus minus average here. And there are Arnold nodes that you can go and use as well. These are, this, this one here is an older one that's been in Maya for a long time. I find the Arnold nodes don't work so well with the displacement preview, at least on my machine. So all we're doing here is adding two floats together. So we're not interested in 3D or 2D. We're adding single floats together. Uh, so the operation is sum. So I'm going to take out color R. Oh, sorry, let's just open this guy up so you can see what's happening. Take out color R and we'll pump it in here and it adds... Uh, it adds another input for me and let's take the uh, out color or from the noise and they're black and white images so the the or channel is going to be the same as the g channel the b channel so then on the other side we want to take the output 1d and we plug that into our displacement map just over here and now we're getting our original displacement and we're getting the high frequency displacement on top so here is the render of the displacement map added over the noise so just to recap on those, this was the original normal map, which has some nice detail in it. 
but is not breaking our edge here. It looks a little bit too shiny and a small bit too stylized. It feels like it's made out of uh, kind of a plastic kind of material. This is some high frequency noise added over the top. And this is some high frequency noise then added to the displacement map. We're getting lots of nice smaller details in here, but we're losing a little bit of the normal map. So one thing that we can do to try and achieve that is we could turn up the strength of the normal map. And then the way we've brought in the normal map here, instead of using a bump 2D, there we're using an AI normal map node. And the big advantage to that really is that there is a strength parameter on it. So let's dial this up to maybe 0 0.9 or something like that. And that will start to bring back in the normal map so that we'll get some of those darker areas back into our render, which gives the impression that there's a little bit more depth in these in the grouting here and the kind of cavities, uh, but keeps the high frequency detail overall and keeps the break up at the edge. So I've just let that render play through. So if I want to compare this to what I started off with, I can set this one to A and I can set the final one here to B and we can just wipe over and you can start to see that. Yeah, definitely getting a little bit more detailing uh, with our shapes overall. And we're getting a little bit more interest around the edges here as well. So you see we had this straight line before and now we're getting some break up down along the edges just along there. Now I'd like to get a little bit more detailing than I'm currently getting uh, overall. It still feels a little bit too soft around the edges. And that's really because we don't have a huge amount of detail in our displacement map. So we took a quick look at adding some detail with our displacement map. But we'd like to bring out the shapes just a little bit more. So in the next video, we'll take a look at trying to generate a bit more shape using a texture deformer.